one is not hard either. Um, that one's not hard either, right? You just need to find the antiderivative of that, right? Okay, but suppose I ask, so you know how to do it, but the thing is, when we get more complicated functions, it gets kind of to, to be a headache. For example, if I asked you, what about this? So what do you have to do? You have to find the function uh, whose derivative is this. That might be hard to do, right? That's going to be hard, right? So for this, it's easy. For this, it's easy. But you know, then maybe you're not satisfied with just doing these. You want to now figure out how to do this one. So that turns out to be more tricky. So uh, we learn different rules for how to work with do you know do more tricky problems. Okay, but the basic concept is all all the same. We're trying to find the definite integral. We're trying to find the area under this curve, under this function, between zero and five. Okay, the just question is how do we find the antiderivative of this? It's not so simple. Okay, so we could go into that, but I think we won't do that in this course, because we don't really we're not really covering derivatives. I'm sorry, we're not really covering integrals. Okay, so we went over the main points. But we're not going to go into all the details about how to do something like this. Okay, this is, we don't need that in, at APU. Okay? Okay, so let's see, how about this one though? Going back, this is not, um, going back to our homework, this is, is this, an, is this a definite or indefinite integral question? Is definite or indefinite? This is indefinite, right? There's no nothing up here and there's nothing down here. This is not an area problem. This is an antiderivative problem. So what about this? What's the answer? What's the antiderivative of this? So this part you're gonna do what? X squared over two times thirteen. And this part, you're going to do what? x to the fourth over 4 times 17. OK? You can make sure that that's right. OK, this, is this a definite or indefinite problem? Indefinite, right? This is not an area problem. This is just an antiderivative problem. OK, same with all of these. All right? Everyone get it? Okay, now do we even have any? Uh, I said definite and indefinite, but I don't see any there. No. Ah, uh, here's my new one. Okay. So how about this one here? Calculate what? the total area. So what kind of question is this? This is a definite integral problem, right? We want the area, okay? So cal calculate the total area. So what's the function that we want to get the area under? This function, so what is that? Two times the square root of x, right? That's a function, right? And between what and what? Between x equals 0 and x equals 25. So how do you have to go about doing this? You have to find the antiderivative. Find the So how do I rewrite this function? 2x to the 1 half. Right? The exponent is 1 half, right? So what's the antiderivative of that? So x to the one half. What's the antiderivative of that? Over zero. I guess it's what is that? Uh, you have to raise this so it's 
x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. Right? Isn't that right? Which I guess we could write like this. Right? So that's the antiderivative. And then we want to go from, it says, go from x equals 0 to x equals 25. So that means you write this. 25 and 0. Right? And you put in 25 into here, and you put in 0, and you subtract. That will give you the answer. Okay? So the question is, and that will give us the answer to what? Okay. To, oh, I forgot the 2 here. So I need a 2 here, and I need a 2 here. Right? Because it, it was 2, yeah. Okay, so we do that. So that's going to give me the uh, answer to what question? What is the area under this curve? Right, this curve between 0 and 25. Okay, so how do you do it again? You find the antiderivative, and then you put in 25 and 0 and subtract. That's the reason we can do that is because somebody proved the fundamental theorem of calculus. They proved that these are related questions. Okay? Okay, one more is this one. How about this one? It's almost exactly the same. Calculate the area under this curve between 0 and 16. Okay, so again, the same idea is what? Find the antiderivative of this, and then put in 16, put in 0, and subtract. Okay? Okay. Now, this has a lot of applications, just like derivatives have a lot, like when we're talking about cost functions and revenue and all that stuff, they have lots of applications. Finding the maximum profit was a derivative problem. Right, we find the highest point on a curve. Right? That was a derivative problem. And this also has lots of applications. Maybe not as many as derivatives, but still has lots of applications. In, in economics, I know they use it and other places. Okay? But, uh, right? Okay, so we did that. So basically, we did everything. What are we going to do for the next two weeks? For the next week and a half? For the next, what, what time do we finish? 3.50? What are we going to do for the next 12 minutes? And the next week after that? Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, I wish we could open this book. Anybody get the book open on their computer? Yeah? What did, you, what did you, do you remember what you had to do? When you press the what button? No, but this book here. So I tried this, then it says I have to ins upgrade my flash player. So I did that before. The read button? Ah, does it work? No, it didn't work. I tried that. It doesn't work. There's, uh, let's see. I have to flash. Where's flash? Download flash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where? This? Oh, flat. Okay, but, okay. No, that's not down. doesn't say. What? No. Okay, let's try it down. Even my 
when I do this, it still doesn't work. First of all, I don't want this, I don't want that. I don't know why they use flash for the book. Well, I guess they have some stuff that has flash. Still doesn't. Hopefully you can get this working in your browser. I've done it before, but I don't remember what exactly we do. Okay, so let's see what else can we do. All right, let's do one more thing. Let's go to one more problem. So 
we divide the question, we answer it in different parts. So like if I asked you, what's the derivative when x equals 3, what would you say? That means what's the slope of the line when x equals 3? What is that? 1, right? How about when x equals 4, what's the slope of the tangent line here? The tangent line is that, and the slope is 1. The tangent line is here, the slope is 1. The tangent line is here, the slope is 1, right? So the derivative of all of these places is what? Is 1, right? The slope is 1. So we have to answer it in two parts. So we usually write it like this. When x is greater than 0, what's the derivative? And so what's the slope? It's 1, right? But when x is less than 0, means here, what's the slope here? Negative 1. And here, negative 1 and negative 1. So the answer is written like that. Okay, otherwise we can't really write the answer. Right? So the derivative of the absolute value function looks like this. Okay? Does so everyone get it? Alright, so this, this is a formula, but it's just not as clean as our usual formulas, but we can't write as clean as our usual formulas. Okay? However, we could actually rewrite it to do this. It turns out this is a nice trick. That is the derivative. Okay? Is that true? Well, it better give me this, otherwise it's not right. Okay, so what happens when I put in 1 into here? We get 1 over 1, right? Which is 1, so it worked there. What happens when I put in 5 here? I get 5 over 5, which is 1. So it works everywhere on the right-hand side. And what happens on, how about for the left hand, for the left hand side? What happens when I put in negative 2 here? Negative 1, right? What happens when I put in negative 5? Negative 1, right? So it works. So I can write that the derivative of the absolute value sign, or the derivative of the absolute value function, is equal to that. Okay, that works, right? But it's really not any better than this, because this thing actually has this in it. I mean, when we talk about the absolute value function, we have to do it piecewise. If we're, you know, it actually has the same double thing. Well, I guess you could write it as x, and yeah, you have to break it up into pieces. You have to say, the absolute value function, what does that mean? It means it's equal to, so you need this. It means it's equal to x and negative x, right? When x is positive, it's equal to this. And when x is negative, it's equal to that. So you still need that, that double piecewise. This is called piecewise. You still need that piecewise definition. So it kind of looks like we don't have to have that piecewise, but it's actually in here anyway. But anyway, we can say this. Okay, so the, we can say that the, the derivative of the absolute value of, of x is that over that. Okay? Okay, so we covered that. All right, so next uh, week you have the quiz on the linear algebra week one. Okay? And uh, we'll cover something else next week.